Hi Stuart, thank you very much for joining us today. Can you give us the background to the 10 in 10 concept and if you could tell us what is the state of the confectionery industry today and why do you think this sector has stopped growing in recent years in line with the industry? Um, so, good question. Look, the, the, the challenge the category is facing um, in the last three years has been a, a marked slowdown by comparison with the, the previous 10 years where the category was growing at uh, a compound annual growth rate of 9.7%, which was ahead of even passenger growth rates and uh, total category sales even more so. So we were, um, total industry sales I should say. So the actual sort of dynamic over the previous window is one of extreme growth followed by a sudden softening. And this sudden softening gave us cause to stop, pause, ask ourselves the question, why is this happening? what's going on underneath it and ask the basic question does it need to be like this and it doesn't need to be like this we can re-engage uh, the the category with passenger growth we firmly believe that and we've done a whole lot of work as Nestle really understanding consumer needs shopper needs um, globally both in domestic as well as in duty-free um, and this is really what's helped us um, build with confidence uh, uh, a vision for the future that says the category should be able to grow to $10 billion in the coming 10 years. What are the principles behind 10 in 10 and why do you think it will kickstart uh, the sector back into growth? Well, I think it will kickstart the sector back into growth from the simple standpoint of understanding what the consumers and the shoppers are looking for. Um, and trends change and need states change. And what we've, what we've done is we've identified three very specific um, need states that consumers are looking for today. Um, these are deeper connections, things which are better for you, and elevated experiences. And everything can be built upon one of these three platforms. Um, we've got nine core category growth drivers tucked underneath these three particular need states but it's these three need states which are at the heart of what consumers are looking for and understanding the requirements of each of the uh, of the consumers um, subject to their nationality and their their travel occasion will allow us to really start to to reconnect the category with this passenger growth which is still there what has the industry's response been to the 10 in 10 concept particularly from retailers and brands um, well, from a retailer standpoint, we've had, uh, we've had a couple of very positive responses from a couple of very big retailers, which we're very happy about, um, and uh, we're working actively with, uh, with them. Um, uh, elsewhere from brand owners, I mean, I think people within our category have been positive about it because we see this as a category initiative. It's very important to say it's not a Nestle initiative. This is a category opportunity and a category initiative, and we've referenced the roles that our competitors can play to help drive the category forward. Nestle on its own will not be able to drive the whole category to this 10 billion in 10 years. However, if everybody puts their shoulder to the wheel, then, then we're gonna make progress. And as the old saying goes, uh, all ships climb on a rising tide. And if we can make the total category, then it's something where everyone's gonna benefit. How is Nestle planning to execute the 10 in 10 uh, concept in 2020? Well, I think 2020 is simply the start point of the journey it's safe to say. Um, 2020 will not be the end game, it will not be the first of everything. Um, it, we will be, have to do things in steps down the journey. But the first is really deeply understanding these consumer need states and the category growth drivers that are therefore built into these particular need states. Once you've got a handle on these, then what we're going to do is we then leverage this understanding of what these occasions are that the consumers are looking for and we build it into our sole framework. Now, Seoul is something that we've been talking about for the last few years as uh, Nestle International Travel Retail, and it's about the story that a brand has. It's about the occasion that that brand is going to try and meet. It's about having something unique that th the brand will be offering that's not available elsewhere, and then doing it in a way which provides some local execution. Uh, so this is how Seoul, uh, the Seoul framework from a brand building side, brings it to life, because at the end of the day, that's what consumers buy into. Mm -hmm. Consumers buy into the brands themselves. So on the one hand, it's about understanding the shopper needs and then bringing it to life through Seoul. How has the industry and the confectionery category changed since 15 years ago when Nestle declared an, an ambition to double the category? 
Well, pleased to say that uh, from when we were first talking about it, which was when I was, I was first in the industry, um, the category did double in that five-year window. It was possible at that point to double in five uh, years. And uh, again, it was a it was a category-wide thrust that got it there. It wasn't just what Nestle did, uh, but Nestle certainly reaped the benefit of uh, bringing that sort of thinking to the industry. Um, and it was at the, the heart of what was driving that period of growth that I was talking about earlier, where there was a 9.7% compound annual growth rate. And it's a fantastic growth rate for a category within an industry like ours. So there's been that period of fantastic growth that we talked about back then that we brought to life. Um, and we're uh, hoping and we'll be working hard to make sure that the, uh, this new one that we're bringing to the table is once again a, a springboard for the category in its totality. I think one thing that's very important to, to add at this point, when we're talking about the category, we're talking about confectionery and fine food as the category in total. I think the, the food part of the, the, uh, the category is one which has been a bit of a Cinderella within the equation and underexploited until now. And I think one of the things we're seeing already this year and as we look into next year is the, the, uh, the strong growth of food beyond confectionery. And uh, as the world's largest food and drink company, that's really a, um, a place where we hope to uh, deliver more to our customers and to our, our shoppers and consumers going forward. If you had one key message to the travel retailers for the confectionery category, what would it be? Well, it's always hard when you put, put me down to one particular message, but the opportunity is still there. I think that's the key message I want people to understand. A lot of other categories are performing have performed extremely well the last three, four years and have become um, flavour of the month in relation to, to what's going on. I think the, the message to the, uh, the other retailers within the industry is this category has a huge amount to offer and uh, Nestle will be uh, doing its level best to really uh, uh, bring all of this to the fore and make sure that the category plays its role within the total industry because we're there alongside of perfumes, cosmetics, alcohol, tobacco and the others. So um, it's an exciting time ahead.